being a princess. Sometimes I think that I would like to be a princess. A princess would live in a palace, and wear beautiful clothes. She would have servants to do chores for her, and she would probably marry a handsome prince. People would recognize her. They would wave to her as she drove by. It seems like it would be a lot of fun to be a princess, but maybe it wouldn't be so nice. Maybe it would be terrible to be recognized by everyone. Maybe a princess would feel like everyone was watching her. She would have to look nice every time she left the palace. There would always be people with cameras who wanted to take her picture. A princess would have no privacy. Even in her own palace, there would be servants around, so she would never really be alone. If I were a princess, I would worry about security for my family. Sometimes, people who are in high positions are threatened by other people. That would be a worry. I'm not so sure that being a princess would be all that much fun. I think it might be better to be just a normal person like me. I don't have to worry about looking wonderful all the time. People don't follow me around and take my picture. Whenever you see a picture of a princess, she is smiling. I wonder if she's smiling on the inside, or just smiling for the camera. Louis Pasteur. Louis Pasteur was one of the greatest scientists of all time. Pasteur made very important discoveries in biology and chemistry, and the techniques he developed helped greatly develop medical science and the agricultural and food industries. Pasteur was born in a small town in France during the year 1822. When he was a young man, Pasteur studied science at a university in the city of Paris. He soon did some excellent work in chemistry, and later began his famous study of germs. Pasteur was one of the first scientists to understand that many diseases could be caused by extremely small invisible organisms. Only a few other scientists had believed this before Pasteur. He advised doctors to wash their hands thoroughly before treating patients. Pasteur also demonstrated that life forms did not arise spontaneously. His research confirmed the idea, developed by previous scientists, that a living organism would not appear unless other individuals of its kind were present. One of Pasteur's most important contributions was a technique that has been named after him: pasteurization. Pasteurization kills the germs that are found in drinks. Such as milk or beer, because of Pasteur's technique, people are no longer infected with diseases by drinking these liquids. Just as important as pasteurization was a technique called immunization. Pasteur found that a person or animal could be made safe or immune from a disease by injecting the person with some weakened germs that cause the disease. The body can resist the disease after being immunized in this way. Today, many diseases are prevented by the use of this technique. Pasteur's discoveries also helped to save people who had already been infected with diseases. One such disease is rabies. Rabies is a disease that sometimes occurs in animals. This disease usually kills the animal, but before dying, the animal becomes very aggressive. And may spread the disease by biting a person or another animal. One day, the parents of a young boy came to Pasteur. Their son had been bitten by a dog that had the rabies disease. The parents knew that their son would die from the disease unless something could be done to save him. Pasteur agreed to help the boy, and the immunization technique saved the boy's life. Pasteur died in 1895. He was greatly admired around the world for his achievements, which have helped all of mankind. Today, Pasteur is considered to be the greatest figure in the history of medicine.
River dance is an expression of modern Irish culture, but it is based on a culture which had its golden era from the 6th to the 9th century. Before that period, Irish culture was oral and based on a love of complicated stories and poetic styles. But in the 6th century, something wonderful happened. Writing was introduced by missionaries. From then on, the culture of Ireland began to develop in ways impossible before and had considerable influence in northern Europe in the period up to the 9th century. With the invasions which began in the 9th century, this golden age collapsed and there never was any real recovery. There were no wealthy kings to sponsor the poets and scholars, so the tradition survived only in a form which the peasants liked. The love of story and song did not die, but no real attempt was made to find a distinctive Irish style until the end of the 19th century, when Irish nationalism began to influence writers in English called Anglo-Irish literature. There are many famous writers from that period. There is also William Butler Yeats, George Bernard Shaw and Samuel Beckett, all of whom have received the Nobel Prize for Literature. In all, Ireland has received the Nobel Literature Prize four times. When you consider we have only a population half the size of Beijing, you see how unusual that is. Now, let me talk about the music. The Irish love of music has succeeded in surviving the change from Irish, the native language, to the language of the invader, and has once more begun to blossom and become influential outside the country. Irish music was reduced to being the language of the country people and was dying out as people moved to the cities. Young city people did not want to listen to peasant music, although we were all told it was important. Some efforts were made to make it attractive to city people, but largely without success. More recently, this has begun to change and since the 1980s has taken off. But modern Ireland has been looking for more than just a revival of traditional music. Many of the most famous popular singers in the world are Irish. U2, Enya, The Cranberries and many others. There are 10,000 people employed in Ireland in the music industry. River dance is an expression of that new interest in the old and that ability to understand the new.